and I objected, and I wouldn't have even thought about anyone doing this other than the fact that I've seen the prior behavior throughout this trial of this type of nonsense. And we are back, and we are back. Everybody, thank you for watching this video today. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up, y'all. We're going to have a really good video. We're going to bring you a lot of insight into either a strategy that DA Love used when questioning Quindarius Zachary. Either this is a pretty sly, slick, and maybe even underhanded strategy, or she's just speaking and maybe not being very clear. But as you can see, as you can see coming up, Max Sharp noticed that she wasn't being clear, made an objection, and DA Love continued possibly on purpose, and this is what Shard is arguing, she continued to be unclear and confuse a subject. So we're going to get into it, but let me explain this to you. On April 28th, 2015, there were a series of shootings. Now, Monk Tunk, Monk Tunk, he's already testified that himself, Monk Tunk, Garlington, and Zachary went out and they conducted at least one, if not several shootings that night. Now, D.A. Love is asking Zachary, who was one of the shooters, who's one of the participants, she's asking Zachary about this. But she brings up Shannon Stilwell's name. Now, Shannon Stilwell was never put on trial or convicted of these shootings. But as you will see, D.A. Love brings up Shannon's name and lumps them in with the other three names of people who already have been convicted for these shootings and when she brings up shannon's name she then uses the the term those people when talking about the shooting and it sounds like she's saying shannon was there so take a listen you said that you were closest with Muntum, or you were coolest with Muntum. all right were you coolest with Muntum in april 2015. april yes and were you cooler with Mootoot than you were, say, Shannon? Yes. Now, in April 2015, were you also cooler with Demetrius? Yes. April 28, 2015. Do you remember being with those people? Yes. Where? So as you can hear, she brought up the date of the shooting and she brought up three people, Shannon Stilwell, Quindaria Zachary, and Antonio Sledge, Mungtum. Now it sounds like she's in, she's bringing Shannon into this mix, into this shooting spree, into this night of shootings. And you're going to see Shart is going to pick up on this and he's going to have an objection. But before Shart objects, this line of questioning is going to go on for a little longer. So just listen, just listen up now that you realize that Shannon's name has been involved in this line of question. Continue to listen how far it goes and listen with that perspective until Sharp makes his objection. Don't we call our case on um, who's in the car together? What kind of car? I don't remember what kind of car. Uh, what did you have in the car? A gun. How many? So, two, three, one on. Okay. And um, <clears throat> what time did you all get in the car together? Daytime or nighttime? Night. Was it after 10 o'clock at night? Yes. Right. Had either you or either one of the people you were in the car with been to Club Fusha earlier? I think they was. So how did you end up in the car with him? Came and got me. Did you ask him to come and get you? Yes. Why did you ask him to come and get you? Because somebody had shot up my cousin, huh? Where did your cousin live? On Camerton. All right. And who is your cousin? Alexis Bryant. All right. Why did you tell them to come get you if you had your own vehicle? Because my girlfriend was in mine. Your girlfriend was in yours? Yes. All right. No, no, I'm wrong. Because I was going to get in the car with my girlfriend. I was getting dropped off to her. Okay. And 
so did you have guns? Yes. How many guns total were in the car? I know I had two. And did you see any more? The Mickey on had one. <laughs> were you wearing dreads during that time? No. Okay. Quick note. Also, this is a very curious question. There are many photos and videos of him from that time, and he did not have dreads. Neither did anybody else that I know of, but Shannon is in the court with dreads right now. Is this a sly tactic, y'all? Let me know what you think. And this question may have been what alerted Shark, may have perked his ears up, like, what's going on here? So, where did they pick you up from? Cleveland Avenue. Where on Cleveland? Um, the store, I think. Which store? BP. Was that the same one you were at with that gun? Yes. Where you got arrested in May? Yes. Okay. So, do you just normally hang out at the BP with guns? Yes. All right. So, when they came and got you, what did they do? Yes. Hey, I'm trying to figure out who we're talking about. Your Honor, I, first of all, asked him about people, and then I referred to those people specifically. All right. So, Who are those people? Your Honor, I'd ask Bill. Question. He'll have no so, is it a vagueness objection? That's just vagueness. Your Honor, I was specific. I asked him about a specific set of people. I don't know I what. Specifically referred to them. Loved intentionally does not want to clarify the people she's talking about. Yeah, why would Maybe. we want to know I'm what we're talking about? Do you want to? Do you want to re-clarify, please? can continue and then I can ask a separate set of questions. Of course, Mr. Sharp has him on cross. Well, I, I think we should be clear about what we're talking about right now. Ask. Thank you. Go ahead and clarify. When I ask you about Garlington, Moncton, and Shannon. You said Garlington and Moncton. You didn't hear me say Shannon? No. Yes. That Let's take they a break. Was to hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's just take a our mid-afternoon break right now. Notice how she came back around and still included Shannon, even though at this point she's talking about a shooting where Shannon was not there. So all H-E double hockey sticks about to break loose. And now you can see why. You can see exactly what Love did. She included Shannon in a night of shootings where he has not been charged. He's not been on trial. So you can see what she did. And Max Sharp picked up on it probably because she, I think when she asked about the dreadlocks, it's when Sharp said, what? I think everybody's like, what? Why did she ask that question? So anyway, we're going to see now what, what happens and things get really heated really quickly. All right, Mr. Sharp. Your Honor, this is, what just happened was completely dishonest, disingenuous, misleading, and gross. And, and you I objected. Wouldn't, I wouldn't, and I objected, and I wouldn't have even thought about uh, anyone doing this other than the fact that I've seen the prior behavior throughout this trial of this type of nonsense where we try to trick a witness and to think we're saying they meaning two, three people and then try to convince the jury that we're somehow including my client Shannon when it's clear that my client, I mean, excuse me, the witness does not, is not following. That's what we're talking about. Okay. And it's disgusting. And I don't know how we cure it, but it's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to move for a mistrial. I think it was completely intentional. Obviously, it was calculated. Obviously, when I asked for clarification, I would think anyone seeking the truth would gladly clarify. I'm seeking the truth. I would gladly clarify. No, it's sheepish grin and then. All right. I understand your objection. And I understand what you were saying past that objection. Miss Love, I think I one thing. That, no, you need to listen. I think that one thing that
that needs to happen is when an objection is made and you are given an opportunity to respond and I make a ruling, even if that ruling is please clarify, that you then need to obey what my order is instead of continuing to argue. Your Honor, when I ask for um, clarification and consideration, I believe that as an advocate and as a person who is actually representing um, the victims who have been victimized in this case and who is representing as much as, an, as actually more than an officer of this court and I represent something, I believe that the state has as much right to express, to request, and to ask for consideration and for an allowance to ask, ask the questions that it wishes to ask as the defense does. I believe, Your Honor, the objection that was made, and I understand what Mr. Shart said, but there are a couple of things at play here. One, Mr. Shart is well aware that Mr. Zachary has said that his client was with him. He has said it in the interview that I'm holding in my hand. He is not being honest with the court when he is claiming that Mr. Zachary had no idea what I was talking about. I literally said Shannon, uh, Demikion, and Moutum, and I asked him how close he was with each of them. Right, and then we went from that to his girlfriend, and then it, it was not unreasonable, and the objection could just be, you know, vague, but it was not unreasonable to object to make sure that it was clear what the question was, who the they was in the question. And when I say clarify, that needs to be the end of it. And you need to ask a different question, rephrase the question, and let's move on. And there shouldn't Honor, be an issue the, with it. Yes, Your Honor. If, if the state is not allowed to ask for a clarification or consideration, that I, I, I understand. I don't know what you mean by that. Your Honor, when I ask... A clarification of my ruling? Is that what you mean? When I ask for permission beyond what the court has instructed, I did not know that I should not do that, so I won't do that anymore. That's not what was going on. You're basically, it seems to say, I'm asking permission to do something other than what the court has just ordered me to do. And so if that's what it is, then no, you cannot do that. If you need clarification of a ruling, then of course you can ask that. And if you want reconsideration, then you can ask for that, but that does not need to go on in front of the jury. When I make a ruling, obey the ruling and move on. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Your Honor, I, I, I really haven't heard any explanation for what happened. I think it was calculated. I'm moving for a mistrial. In the alternative, Your Honor, um, I do believe that there needs to be a curative instruction or at least it needs to be clarified who they was. It doesn't matter what he said in the past. He lied in the past. I've already said that. I, I know what he said in the past, All right. but what he's testifying... We don't know. You don't know that he lied. You don't know what the truth is and what the lie is if they are inconsistent. And there may even be a reason for that. Although if they're virtually diametrically opposed, there probably is not an explanation. But when you say he lied, we don't know that. Okay. Just like Miss Love doesn't know when he lied. Well, I'll put it like this. Mr. Stilwell was never charged with those crimes. And Miss Love was not asking about what he said in 2015. She was asking about today. I understand. And today, he was clearly responding, they meaning Mr. Garlington. And well, it's clear to me. I don't believe it's clear to the don't jury. Don't talk while he's talking. And I believe it needs to be clarified immediately because. Of course, I will have an opportunity to cross, but I will probably not have an opportunity to cross for about four days. And I don't think we should be misleading the jury on direct. All right, I'm gonna look back at what the transcript says. I, I mean, and Miss Love, you may, given that there's now a uh, motion for mistrial on the floor um, in assertion that you did things purposefully, you may respond to that. I vehemently object to the mistrial. I vehemently object to any mistrial, and I beg the court to look at the transcript and see what I said right before I asked him, the people that I just mentioned. And I would ask that the court, I mean, if the court deems it appropriate that such language is gross and 
all of the disparaging remarks made by counsel for the defendants are appropriate, that's one thing. But I'd ask that the court limit that type of behavior, which is, you know, not becoming of officers of the court. I agree with that. It is not becoming. All right, y'all can take a break if you want to. I'm going to take a look at the stream script. Wants to hear from the court in reference to if he finishes today, will he go home? If he doesn't finish, he wants to know where he's going to go. And I've tried to explain to him, you don't want him to go back to the jail. He can't go to the hospital. And so we talked about it. Well, if he finishes today, then as long as there's nothing else holding him, which I don't think there is, then yes, he goes home. And if he doesn't, yeah, I can let him know that. If he doesn't, do y'all have a proposal? That's what we were trying to work on. And I told Mr. Shive that I understand that his interest is to come. Can y'all hear him, her? Can you use a mic? And we talked about it. So she just needs to come up. You know, he wants to go home with the GPS. I understand the court doesn't want him to. And neither does the DA. All right. I'll tell him that might still be determined. Okay. And that's what I told him. Okay. All right. And in terms, I have reviewed what the line of questioning was. And I do not think that there was anything nefarious and purposeful about trying to trick him into something other than what he'd been talking about. At the same time, I can see how it might have been. Well, now, are you sure he knows that the people we were just asking about are the people that you're talking about him now, you know, coming to pick him up? So a valid objection. It remains sustained. But the motion for mistrial is denied. I am not giving any kind of instruction. You can just fix it by asking the next question. All right. Anything else on that? Your Honor, just for the record. Okay. And you used the mic, too. Yes, I understand. Yes, Your Honor. And I understand the court's ruling. I think that the use, all of a sudden, the use of they and those people instead of names, and then when asked for clarification, the refusal to do so, I think, suggests that there was some calculation. But I understand the court's finding. But I would ask the court to instruct Ms. Love to clarify with the first question so everyone's on the same page, so there's not confusion amongst the jury, who he is referring to when he's talking about they in the car that night. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Actually, Your Honor, I think the court was about to say something. I think I was probably going to say maybe the same thing as you, but I have no idea. So go ahead. I was going to ask that the court read back the exact question that I'd asked right before I said they. I'll have to find it again. So that wasn't what the court was going to ask. All right. So after the questioning about where he and his girlfriend lived, you said you were close with, and obviously this isn't the, this is as close, this is the real time. It's not the official transcript. But you said you were close with Mung Tung or cool with Mung Tung. All right. Were you close with Mung Tung in April 2015? Yes. Okay. And were you cooler with Mung Tung than, say, Shannon? Yes. All right. Now, in April 2015, were you also cooler with Garlington? And I can't tell what the rest of that is. Yes. April 28th, 2015. Do you remember being with those people? Yes. All right. And I have to, where? Back, some kind of car. I can't tell exactly. I don't know what kind of car. What did you have in the car? A gun? How many? Two or three? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what time did y'all get in the car together? Daytime or nighttime? Nighttime. Was it after 10 o'clock? Yes. All right. I mean, at this point, there's nothing that indicates he doesn't think that we're talking about the three people that she just asked about. 
had either you or either one of the people you were in the car with been at Club Crucial earlier? I think they was. So how'd you end up in the car with them? Um, and then the names don't always get, but somebody came to get you. Yes. All right. Why did you ask them to come get you? Because my head shot. Um, and then something about where my cousin lived, camp, something or another. Campbellton. Why'd you tell them to come get you if you had your own vehicle? Because my girlfriend was in it. Your girlfriend was in yours. Yes. All right. I don't think because I was going to get the car with the girlfriend, something. Did you have guns in the car? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, were you wearing dreads at that time? No. Okay, so where did they pick you up from? Cleveland Avenue. Where on Cleveland? The store, I think. Which store? Same one you were at with the gun? Do you normally hang out at the store with guns? Yes. Um, all right, and he came and got you what did they do? Your Honor, I'm going to object. So, I mean, again, valid objection, but also not, you know, not any kind of purposeful, oh, aha. So there's a live stream um, and, and I reviewed the live stream. Um, I'll also point out that nowhere in discovery, he says they were at the club. Okay. In, in the testimony. It would have been easier to review the live stream. Yep. And, and, and Mr. Mr. Uh, Zachary said they were at the club. Mm -hmm. uh, the state is very well aware, as am I, that even in prior statements, it is clear that and Mr. Sledge's testimony, Mr. Sledge and Demeke on Garlington were at the club. Mr. Stilwell is never alleged to be at the club at, at Club Crucial. So it is very clear that Mr. Uh, Zachary is referring to when he says they, is referring to Mr. Sledge and Mr. Garlington. Um, it is also very clear to me by the fact that Ms. Love repeatedly refuses to clarify that she wants the jury to believe that they also includes Mr. Stilwell, which is not what um, Mr. Zachary believes at this point. Okay. And, and I'm just going to ask that it be clarified with the first question, and then we, then we can stop using pronouns um, we're, and, and we're not going to stop using program pronouns. I mean, that's just not how people talk. Well, but it, it's it's led to a she mess had right already now. been at, um, instructed to clarify before we took the break, and she's going to clarify. And Your Honor, I believe that um, Mr. Zachary already addressed that. The court can listen to the live stream or look at the transcript. But I think that I heard him say. Um, because of Mr. Sharts, I don't know what that was, but Your Honor. Um, he, yeah, he, he then said, I didn't hear you say Shannon. That's kind of how we left it. And so, Your Honor, the, to the extent that there are these um, dispersions being cast, these, um, I don't know, attempts for, I don't know. What yeah, that needs is. to stop. I mean, you don't know what's in Miss Love's head. You don't know why she's asking a particular question. And, you know, just let's stop making it so personal between attorneys. That's really not appropriate. It's not professional. Okay. Well, Your Honor, I, I, I have strong feelings about what just happened. And I, and, and, and I will stop saying what you don't want me to say, but I can't help how I feel about it. And that's not going to change. But I've also been accused of insinuated that I've been uh, conspiring with a man that I've never spoken to in let's, my life repeatedly. And, and let's so, everybody stop with well, the personal yeah. jabs against each other to the extent anybody has been making them. Okay. All right. We don't, we don't need any more of this. Let's just get back on what we're doing. That's supposed to be based on facts. Okay. So, you understand if you're going to ask any more about this line of questioning, clarify who it is that you are asking him about. Yes, Your Honor. I understand okay. that if I'm going to ask him any more about this question, okay. I'll clarify All who right. I'm talking Thank about. You. So we'll get um, Mr. Zachary out. So what do y'all think? Now that you've seen the entire back and forth, what do you think? I feel like the more I watch it, the more it, it looks like it was intentional. It's hard to say what's happening in somebody else's head, though, y'all. To be fair to love, 
it's hard to be it's hard to know what's happening in her head but shark did ask her to clarify again she's up there she's doing her job she's she's on the spot in a sense she's in her flow right so i agree that nobody knows what's in her head but shark was very very sharp he was very sharp he was on his game to pick that up and again i think it was that dreadlocks question that really made him say hold up again i don't know but that's my take on it what do y'all think let me know in the comments i'm gonna let this ride i'm gonna let you see what zachary said about that night i'm gonna let that part continue to play so you can continue to watch and uh but otherwise let me know in the comments what do y'all think when just before we broke on the break and you told the jury who you are saying today was in the car with you on April 28, 2015. Who is it that you are saying now was in the car with you? Uh, me, Garlton, and Sledge. Okay. You, Garlton, and Sledge. And Slash? Yeah. All right. Today is it your testimony that you three were the only people in that car? Yes. Okay. Now, you spoke about talking to detectives Gaither and Dennis back in August of 2015. Do you remember that? Yes. And before you spoke to them, you said that you had not spoken to them outside the room where you were interviewed, correct? No. Okay. No, you hadn't spoken. No, with I them. haven't. Okay. So had either one of them told you or given you any indication that they wanted you to do anything other than give them information that they could confirm or deny. What you mean by that? I'll change it. When you talked to detectives Gaither and Dennis, did they ask you about shootings that had happened in the city of Atlanta between January 10th, 2015, and the time that you were talking to them in August? Yes. And when you talked to them, did you tell them information about those shootings? Yes. All right. Which shootings did you tell them information about? About April 28th. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. And as it related to April 28th, who did you tell them was, first of all, what did you tell them happened on April the 28th? I don't know, I was just making up stuff as I go. Okay. Now, is it your testimony today that you just made up everything that you told them about April 28th? Yes. And do you know whether, did they confront you with anything after you gave them information about April the 28th? What you mean confront me with? For instance, if you said a light was red and it was green, would they ask you or challenge you? I had already knew what had been said before. So what I are you what talking say. about? You somehow, them, the police, I had already knew what was said to them before I even said something to them. Okay, let's talk about that. What do you mean you already knew what was said before to them? I had already Your knew. Honor, I'm going to object. Uh, this is potentially opening the door for hearsay, I believe. Your Honor, I potentially. <laughs> Without saying what someone else said, what do you mean you already knew? Do, Knew when? What are you talking I had about? I already knew that somebody else had already told them about the shooting. Okay. So, how, I'm sorry, let me ask you this. 
Were you present when someone else told them about a shooting? No, someone told me. All right. When did someone tell you? When they got out of jail. All right. I'm asking, do you know a month or a year? I told you, 2015. Okay. And is the person who told you something they told police about the shooting, Damikian Garlington? Yes. All right. Now, is there a time frame that you believed Damikian Garlington told police these things? I didn't know he got out of jail. He told, he, he told. Don't tell what he said. Just do you have a time frame? 2015. Do you know when in 2015 he supposedly told police no. certain things? I didn't know it when he got out of jail. Okay. Now, did those things that he told police, that you believed he told police, did they involve you? Yes. So when you first told police about the April 28th shooting, shootings, were there more than one? Yeah. How many shootings were there? I'm like two or three. You, how many? Tell the jury where you all went after you got picked up. Uh, for clarity's sake, I'm just going to ask he's, you all. Judge, he's already asked. Go ahead and clarify. Are we talking about the same people you just told the judge jury was in the car with you that picked you up? It's about the same people you asked me about. Okay, and what people are they? The Garlington and Schlitt. Okay. So where is it that you are saying today that you all went after Garlington and Sledge picked you up? To get my girlfriend car. To get my girlfriend. Okay. To get your girlfriend from what location? My cousin's house. Where? Campton. All right. And did you do anything between the time from leaving where you were on Cleveland Avenue at the BP to your girlfriend's house or to your girlfriend's location on Campton? No. All right. How long did it take you to get from the BP to Campbellton? I don't know. All right. Generally speaking, is it like an hour or more like 15 or 10 minutes? About 20 minutes. Thank you. When you got to Campbellton, did anyone else join you in the car? No. Where did you all then go after leaving Campbellton? So the west side. Where on the west side? I don't know them streets. Whose house were you going to? Somebody that had shot at my cousin's house. Somebody what? Who had shot at my cousin's house. We were going to their house. And whose house was that? I don't know. So how did you determine where you all were going to go? It wasn't even just, it's like when we get out of Springville, we saw that car and we followed the car. What car did you all follow? A car that shot at my cousin's house. And describe the car for the jury. I don't remember the car. Was it a pickup truck, a regular sedan? With, I think it was a car. With four doors, two doors? Yes. All right. Which one? Four. All right. And did you believe you knew who was driving the car? Did you? Are you thinking? Yes, I'm thinking. Okay. I don't remember. Who was driving the car? Okay. At the time, did you know or believe someone in particular was driving the car? I can't remember. Okay. So, as you sit here today, is the car parked in front of a house when you all see it, or is it driving? It's driving. And what do you all do? Follow it? Yeah. How far do you all follow it? Not that far. About like three, four minutes. Do you follow it to a house? Yes. Are you familiar with Martin Luther King? Yes. 
All right. Are you familiar with where the Atlanta University Center is? No. Are you familiar with Morris Brown College? No. Spelman, Morehouse, anything like that? Okay. Do you know whether you followed the car to the Martin Luther King area of Atlanta? I don't remember. I just know it from we got out spray wave like three, four minutes. What now? We got out spray wave like three, four minutes. What exit did you all get off? MLK. You did get off of MLK? Yeah. All right. Did you see the occupants get out of the car? Yes. All right. And were the occupants standing outside the car or inside the house when you started shooting at the car? They were walking towards the house. Okay. And what kind of house was it? A, a standalone condo apartment? It's a house. Was it a brick house? I don't remember. All right. And how many people had gotten out of the car? Just me and Carlos. No, I'm asking you. I'm oh. sorry. I should be clear. The car you all were sh you were shooting at, how many people had gotten out of it? Like four, three, something like that. Were they all males, all females, or a combination? Males. All males? Okay. Now, did you know which of those males or all of those males had supposedly shot at your cousin's house? I was, I was high. I don't remember. I just know they, when we pulled up, they were shooting at our house. Oh, so you saw them shooting? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to show you what has been admitted as Stacey Exhibit 6 KK. And if you recall, or if it looks familiar to you at all, would you tell the jury? And if not, let the jury know, okay? Does any part of that house in front of the white car look familiar? I don't know. Okay. So what kind of gun did you use to shoot at the car? Did you shoot at the house too? Shoot, I shot. I don't, I didn't know I shot. Okay. What kind of gun did you use to shoot? I don't remember. I did not have a gun. I okay. About three on. Were you? Did you have all three of them in your hands at one time? No. Nah. All right. So how many did you have in your hands while you were shooting? Uh, one, I think. Was it a long gun or a short gun? It was the gun I got caught with. It was short. Okay. Did it shoot? Short bullets or longer bullets? Long bullets. Long bullets? Okay. Do you have any idea how many shots you fired? No. All right. So what made you stop firing? I don't know. I don't remember. Did the gun have a banana clip or some kind of long magazine? I don't remember what kind of clip it had. And then what did you do after you stopped firing? Got in the car and pulled off. What color was the car you were in? I don't remember. Okay. And where were the other occupants of the car when you got out and started firing? A what car? The car that you were in. Um, me and Garlington got out. Shalit stayed in. All right. So did you and Garlington both shoot at the house? Yes. All right. <coughs> did he have the same kind of gun that you had? I don't remember. I don't have. Was he shooting... Would you all switch guns or did you all have different guns? Yeah, they own gun. Okay. Where did you all go after that? I don't remember. I did told, you? What now? I told you I was like, I went in and out of it at night. Okay. Do you know Darren Mills? No. Do you know, or do you know the name Darren Mills? No. Do you know the name Philip Collins? No. Do you know the name Philo? Yes. All right. How long have you known the name Philo? Not that long. When you say not that long, did you know Philo in, or the name Philo in 2015? Yes. Did you know the name Philo on April 28, 2015? Yes. Did you know um, whether, did you know whether Philo had a child? Mm, I don't know. Did you know whether he had a girlfriend? I don't know. I... Did you? Did you know where Philo lived? No. All right. Now, how would you describe how you felt about Philo? Were you cool with Philo? No. Okay. Had you had conflicts with Philo? No. All right. Describe for the jury um, 
philo best you can. You don't have to be too specific. I don't remember him. All right. Do you remember whether he was uh, taller than you or shorter than you? I don't remember, my love. Okay. How did you know Philo? I don't remember. Well, why do you remember Philo? Uh, you told me how did I know him. I don't remember how I know him. I just remember the name. But what do you remember um, about Philo to remember the name? Um, I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember exactly how I remember nobody. Okay. Now, when you said that earlier, did you say that you all shot up maybe more than one house, maybe one, one or two? We probably think we shot up two, yes. Was one of them an apartment complex? Yes. Now, why did you go shoot up an apartment complex? I told you. I was in and out of it at night. I was on drugs. What now? I was in and out of it at night. I was on drugs. Okay. Um... So what did that have to do with your going to shoot up an apartment complex? Cause they, I believe that whoever apartments complex, they shot up my cousin's house. But I thought you said you followed the people that sh that you saw shooting at your cousin's house to the the standalone house that y'all like shot up. Like three or four of them in the car. But I thought you said the car went to a house that you shot up. They pulled off when we pulled off. Okay, okay, so... They got back in the car and pulled it off. And did you follow them to another place? I think we bumped into them some late on at night or something. Okay. And where did you bump into them later on that night? I think it was still in the same area. Okay. Was it the apartment complex or the house? It was when you say apartments. The same? It was in apartments. Okay. I'm going to show you 62 CC, which has already been admitted as evidence. As, I'm sorry, Lima Lima. 62 Lima Lima LL. And see if you remember or if this area looks familiar to you. Okay. It's already been admitted. So just look at it. All right. And as we're pulling that up, do you remember anything at all about that apartment complex beyond that it was an apartment complex? No. Okay. Now, when you say that you told uh, detectives Gaither and Dennis about that, when you first started talking about it to them, did you tell them that you were involved? Shoot, I told him I was in the car. Did you tell them at first that you were in the car? However it happened, I pleaded yes to it, so I probably I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm not asking you that. Are you going to use this exhibit? Yes, and this is the exhibit 62 Lima Lima that's on the screen. Does that area look familiar to you? No. Okay. You can take it down. All right. So when you told the jury a moment ago that you told Deten detectives Gaither and Dennis what you did because you knew that Garlington had told them something. I did told I you that already though before. I understand. When you said that, do you know or did you believe that Garlington had said you shot up somebody's house? He told well, he told me that he said I did. Okay. Garlington, the one that you've been friends with for 20 years? No. All right. Did he tell you why he would say that? I ain't else. I just laughed. Oh, you did? Okay. Okay. So if you believe that Garlington told them that you did it, why did you deny doing it initially? Because you're supposed to deny it. Did you tell detectives Gaither and Dennis what you believed that Garlington had told them? Yes, I put a, a mixer to it. A what? I twist it up a little. What do you mean? See, I added on what I wanted to add on. 
What does that mean? Try to make myself look innocent. Okay, fair enough. So, who else did you believe that Garlington had told shot up these people's houses? What you mean? Your Honor, that calls for hearsay. I said, you can, I'll rephrase. Okay. Who else did you tell detectives Gaither and Dennis shot up these homes on April 28, 2015? I don't remember. Um, uh, like ten, nine years ago. Did you tell them that Moontoon shot up the houses? No. I told them Moontoon would die. I never told them Moontoon shot no house. Okay. Did you believe that Garlington had already said something about Moontoon? Yes. Ever All right. And you, Moontoon, and Garlington were all equally close to one another during this time? No. Okay. Help then describe if you all weren't Me and equally Moontoon closer. You and Moontoon were closer? And so when Garlington, when you believed that Garlington said Moontoon did something, how did you, did you, did you confront him about it? Confront who, Garlington? Yes. No. Okay. Now, was, if Garlington said that you and Moontoon shot up these houses, along with Garlington, was Garlington conveying something that actually had occurred? Can you use a word I understand? Which part didn't you understand? Conveying. Okay, thank you. Was he saying something that had actually happened? Yes. Okay. So then you just went in and told Gaither and Dennis what happened because you believed or knew that Garlington had already done it? I knew, yes, I knew. Okay. Now, did you ever tell Moulton that Garlington had told on him? I think he knew already. I'm asking you if you ever told Moulton that Garlington told on him. No, I was just trying to, like, free Moulton. Okay. Were you... Did you also tell Gaither and Dennis... But rather, let me ask you this. When you t did you try to tell them at first that you were not there? Probably did. Um, I think I did probably. 